take it back. I was like, take it back. I told him. Uh, good, I think getting can ever start with. All right, if I can, we're going to go ahead and start the Warrants of Board of Alderman meeting for Tuesday, June 15, 2021. And uh, we're going to start off with a review of the public hearing and public comment policy. Uh, Tim, would you please come to the podium to review that? Good evening, Chief, or Mayor and Board members. Uh, the public hearing policy, public comments, city staff will present and request inclusions to the necessary items into the record. Applicants and representatives will be given 10 minutes to present the project and information. Public will be given five minutes to provide comments. When the buzzer goes off, 30 additional seconds will be given to conclude remarks. After the public has spoke, applicants will be given five minutes to address any issues, concerns brought forth during the public comments. Uh, this dialogue is with the board and not the public. Speakers shall not directly question the applicant. All, que or all comments are to be directed to the board, mayor, or our attorney. On zoning matters that do not require public hearing, the same protocol will be followed during the public comment section of each zoning item. At no time are speakers allowed to yield their time to another speaker to allow more than five minutes. Uh, during the agenda item discussion and comments, the board only will occur, no public input. Okay. Thank you. I guess you can stay up there for the, uh, the public hearing section. So on the public hearing, the uh, Ben Beckmeyer Construction Office, CUP-76. Uh, conditional use permit and site plan CUP 76 and site plan 148. Um, as a preliminary matter, I ask that the planning and zoning report be made part of the record by reference. The minutes from the planning and zoning meeting be made part of the record by reference. The city comprehensive plan and the city's ordinance be made part of the record by reference. The public hearing notice published in the Warren County record for the planning and zoning meeting on June 3rd and tonight's meeting be made part of the record by reference. Tonight I present the Ben Beckmeyer Construction Office Conditional Use Permit, uh, CUP 76, and there, there's a site plan 148 that goes along with it. Uh, the applicant is Ben Beckmeyer Construction at 706 State Highway 47. Uh, ben Beckmeyer Construction has submitted an application for conditional use permit and site plan approval for 0.46 acres of land on the east side of Highway 47 and East Lakeview. Um, it's the old firehouse on 47. Okay, the condition use required is requested to allow the construction shop office with inside storage and home sales. The R RC2 district defines contractor's office and inside storage as a conditional use in Appendix A of the zoning code. Uh, the comprehensive plan, the future land use plan designate the subject site as mixed use. As proposed, the applicant will utilize the existing structure for office sales and storage of associate with a uh, construction company. All commercial use used that are consistent with this plan. Uh, the proposed CUP is consistent with the plan and policy of the comprehensive plan with no negative uh, impacts on adjacent parcels are anticipated. The condition of use will not generate noise that exceeds the sound levels that are typical of use permitted in this district. The condition of use will not, um, will not have any substantial adverse effect upon the use of the environment adjacent nearby property or condition affect the public health or safety and welfare. Uh, all new use and interior improvements will be adhered to the applicable safety codes. The condition of use of the light complies with all applicable regulations of this chapter. Uh, the pu uh, approval request for the uh, Ben Beckermeyer construction uh, condition of use permit was presented at the PNZ meeting on June 3rd with no public comments. The conditional use and site plan was approved six to zero with two absence and two vacancies. 
Uh, staff has reviewed the conditional use permit and the site plan and recommends approval with the following conditions. That no outside storage at the location and the trash containers are to be inside the fence area. Uh, that's all I have tonight. The applicant is here and Bart Corman from Lewis and Beatty is here to, to speak. Thank you. This time we'll give uh, 10 minutes to the applicant representative, either of which or both can speak. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Board Alderman. For the record, Bart Corman, Lewis and Beatty, Surveyors and Engineers. Uh, we have here Ben Beckemeyer with Beckemeyer. Ben Beckemeyer Construction LLC. Uh, Tim did a good, pretty good job presenting this. It is the old firehouse there on South 47. Um, because of the the inside storage of the of the zoning requirement, we had come to a conditional use. Basically, the, the building's going to be like it is now. Uh, we're going to stripe the uh, parking lot and get 17 parking spaces, which is the, the required amount. Um, we are going to fence the side and the rear uh, behind the building um, and trash enclosure would be that would serve as a trash enclosure so um, which is added a condition from uh, planning and zoning but it's kind of a city requirement anyway so we're absolutely fine with that that condition that was suggested and I'm um, here to answer any questions that you may have it's pretty simple. At this point, we'll give the public, whether in favor or opposed, five minutes to speak. Please come to the mic, state who you are, and we'll give you your time to speak. Not seeing anybody, we would, Mr. Beckmeyer or Bart, would you like to come back up and say anything? Good. Excellent. All right. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing section of the Warrenton Board of Aldermen for Tuesday, June 15, 2021 and open the regular Board of Aldermen meeting. If you would, please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item will be the consent agenda. Regular meeting minutes and work session minutes from June 1st, 2021. Budget work session minutes and budget executive session minutes from June 8th, 2021. And liquor license renewals for 2021 to 2022. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter and signal by Alderman Cullum. Yep. Roll call vote. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Next, we'll be hearing from the public. We ask that you have something you'd like to share with us or talk to us about. Please come to the mic, the microphone at the podium. State your name. We'll give you five minutes to speak. That's anybody. We'll move on to the Board of Alderman comments. I would just like to congratulate the parents and all the seniors that just graduated this past weekend. Um, good luck to all of you and best wishes. Thank you. I was there. It was hot. Real hot. <coughs> Any other comments? Moving on to Mayor's comments, I do have one comment I'd like to make. Uh, I'd like to congratulate an individual in this room for uh, his best effort in winning the pie eating contest, Alderman Schultz. That was a good job. That's really <laughs> fast. <laughs> Had to carry on. Carried on. <laughs> I was uh, passing the torch. I, I won it two years ago and got diabetes because of it. And, <laughs> and you carried it on. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get diabetes from it. <laughs> No, it was, uh, 
was it sounded like it was a lot of fun. Maybe not a lot of people out there because it was pretty hot and graduation, but um, it sounded like who was out there, it's a good turnout or at least a, I shouldn't say a good turnout, good turnout of vendors. And uh, they had about 13 vendors. It was warm and with graduation, it probably put a damper on some of the crowd, but it was, it was a successful event, I thought. There were more people dressed in traditional German clothing than ever before. Yeah. Maybe it's catching on. All right, with that, we'll move on to the reappointment of Laura, Laura Zimmer, Zimmer, Anna Taylor, and John Brockfeld to the park board for a three-year term, and Rick Gastorf Jr. to the IDA board for a six-year term. I'll entertain a motion to approve the mayor's appointments to the park board for a three-year term and IDA board for a six-year term. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump. Seconded by Alderman Deloy. We'll call vote. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Motion passes six to zero. Next will be public comments. So the amendment to section 405.350, is that for you, Councilor? Mayor and Board, good evening. I figured you guys had missed hearing me present long-windedly at these public comment, public hearings, so I'm back. Where'd you hear that? <laughs> so ironic, so what we have tonight is a request to amend section 405350 notice of public hearing. And as you all will recall, we adopted the city and planning and zoning adopted a very clear public hearing, public comment policy. So it had basically had an orderly opportunity for everybody to be heard at meetings, whether it was to comment on zoning or comment on different uh, land use petitions that were coming through the city. One of the things when we organized and put that policy together for you all to look at uh, that we realized was for conditional use permits and conditional use permits alone under our code, two public, hearing are, two public hearings are required. That is not required for anything else. So for example, I'm talking about this in public comments to amend the ordinance to remove the public hearing for a conditional use permit because it only has one public hearing under our code. Mr. Beckermeyer's project has two public hearings for the conditional use that you heard earlier. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I think at planning and zoning, I heard, uh, I agree from Bart and the crowd about the fact that it doesn't really make a lot of sense that we have a double public hearing just for conditional use permits. So our recommendation from a staff level is to remove it, it's redundant. Um, you know, the opportunities happen at the Planning and Zoning Commission level, and we have this in place so people still have an opportunity to be heard at every meeting on any zoning matter being determined, um, where it's delineated in the agenda and there's a set amount of time and time for applicants to respond. So I can answer any questions if you guys have any. <coughs> if not, I am finished, Alderman Delaware. <laughs> Next item will be the Ben Beckmeyer Construction Office Site Plan 148, and I believe uh, <coughs> does it encompass the CUP 76 or no? It's attached with the both. It's the same information okay. on both. Got it. Okay. Questions on any of that? I believe it was explained during the public hearing section, which there again, as the counselor so eloquently put it, was redundant to go over it again. Like my kids. No questions? No uh, questions. We'll move on to Steinhagen boundary line adjustment, uh, SUBD-91. This is a um, boundary line adjustment. The applicants is Jeffrey and Lori Kniper at 305 Steinhagen. Um, they submitted an application of boundary line adjustment which modifies lot one and two into a single uh, 24,302 square foot lot. Uh, no modifications to the utilities are proposed in conjunction with this change in the lot configuration. 
um, the area is zone residential under the provision of R2, medium dens density residential district requirements. Um, the comprehensive plan designate this area as a single family residence and propose modification to the boundary line. Do not create inconsistencies with the future land use plan for the city. Um, the Steinhagen uh, boundary line adjustment was presented on June uh, third at the uh, PNZ meeting with n public comments, and the boundary line adjustment was approved six to zero, two absence and two vacancies. Uh, staff uh, recommendations. Staff has reviewed the proposed boundary line adjustment plat and found that the proposal is consistent with Chapter 410, uh, the subdivision regulation and warn warranted, warranted municipal code. Staff recommends approval of this plat as submitted. Uh, the applicant is here, sir. For you. For any questions? That's all I have. And I believe all three of these will be bills later on in the agenda. Any questions about the last one? Uh, we will have a at the end for our bills. Okay. okay. All right, we'll move on to the request for road closures on July 4th for the Warren County Fair Parade. I believe Paul Ombi is here if we have questions, but I think it's pretty laid out in the permit. Are there any questions? I think the only question okay. is, uh, we're going to be able to handle the influx of people that will probably be out there and tired of being in their homes and want to see a good parade again. <laughs> so I'll entertain a motion to approve the... the, the <laughs> The road closure of on July 4th for the fair parade as requested. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Jasper. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Next will be a request for exemption from time constraint for loud noise for the Warren County Fair. This is pretty, for new aldermen, this is pretty standard. They do ask this every year. Um, so, sure, nothing new, but it is something they always do. So. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? I'll entertain a motion to approve the request for exemption from time constraint for loud noise during the fair. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Deloy. Seconded by Alderman Schultz. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Motion passes 6 0. Next, we'll hear from City Administrator Brandy Walters. Um, the first thing that I have for you tonight is we're going back to that national night out for August 3rd just so that way we can plan um, and make sure that we get notices out in time. It's from 4 to 8, but it is on a board meeting night. I just need to know if you guys want to continue with a board meeting. Do you want to reschedule or do you want to cancel and only have one meeting that month? For me, it's hard, and I'll, um, I know I'm not the one that votes on it, but I will say... Um, not knowing what's on the agenda or what we may be presented with. I would prefer to do the meeting, get through the meeting, and then be able to go and enjoy or be there for it um, because I feel like we kind of owe that to anybody who's applying for anything or not put him off for another two weeks. That's my opinion, but everybody's entitled to it and can voice it. But I'd prefer to see it stay on. I would agree with that. Is there any way we could... Do the meeting a little early, maybe? Oh, I can barely get here for the 6 o'clock. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll drag you in here. <laughs> I'm sure you can get permission from your boss. I'm, I'm, yeah, I know. I'll have to take a vacation that day just to be here on time, right? <laughs> just a thought. I'm not opposed to that. If we wanted to do it I'm early, okay either way. Early, day time, time, early. Yeah. We can do that. Earlier the better. No? Try you do, yeah, I was going to say, you don't know what may come up, so. Um, what about two in front? I'm good. Either way. Yep. So Let's try and do it a little five? earlier. Five. Five o'clock, yeah. Five, five. <coughs> perfect. 
Do you need a Do you need a, a motion on that? Why? Well, don't know. Sometimes on changes we need that. So. Um, the other thing that I have for you tonight is the Zoom is up and running. So we are live on Zoom for meetings now. There's not Excellent. any interaction, but they can watch and listen. Um, the packets for the the packets for all the agendas that's up live and running in the website. So you just have to go on the website, click I want to find, and it's Board of Aldermen packets, and it has the agenda, it has the packets, just like what you guys receive. Everything is all right there. Um, so that's up and running. And the only other couple things I have for you is tonight there's an ordinance that is um, an annual ordinance where we execute the agreement between the city and the Warren County Council of Aging, which for any of you new folks, that's um, Meals on Wheels. So the city donates basically money to them up to $10,000 or up to $11,000, I believe. If they go 10 or more, they have to get an audit. Um, and that's to pay for Meals on Wheels for anybody here inside the city limits of Warrington. That's later on the agenda. And the other one that we have is the agreement between the city and Warren County Schools. And that one is an agreement to for us to supply them with security officers at their board meetings and their functions, um, the SRO officers, and crossing guards. And they pay a portion of those wages, just so that way you guys are aware. And that's all I have. Next, we'll hear from Melody Ruiz, City Clerk. Since John's not here tonight, I'm going to present the admin report. Good news, if everybody looks across the line for the interviews conducted for May, we had 23. 18 of those was for the Aquatic Center. So, wow. let's hope everything's improving. Anybody have any questions? Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Finance Officer Dana Belaska. Good evening. Uh, before you this evening, we have two items. Uh, we have a budget adjustment for this current fiscal year. There will be an ordinance later on for your approval. Uh, on the budget adjustment, some key items that you'll see are changes to revenues, uh, court fines, um, uh, police fines within court, and uh, reduction in pool revenue. So those two revenues went down somewhat this year. You have MoDOT's share of the 47 sidewalk project. We won't receive those funds until next fiscal year, so that $1.4 million will be re reduced from the current budget. Also, the Highway 47 sidewalk expense, uh, $1.8 million will be reduced from this current budget and moved to next year's. Bond proceeds related to the new sewer project, uh, $5.5 million. Those will come in July. Sewer stormwater projects, there were some that were started uh, a year ago and were finished during this fiscal year. So a total of 153,000 in carryover sewer stormwater projects. So those are the key items on the budget adjustment and again that'll come before you a little bit later. Were there any questions regarding current year budget adjustments? I don't have any. I think we're good. So the next item on the agenda is the budget for next fiscal year, for fiscal year 2022. Uh, again, you had a lengthy work session last week and went over um, all the projects and a lot of detail on the budget. So the budget that's being presented to you for next year includes revenue across all funds of $13.7 million, operating expenses of $8 million, capital projects of $14 million, Revenues include property taxes of 490,000, sales tax of 5.2 million, water sewer revenue of 4.3 million, loan proceeds of 5.59 million, again bond proceeds from or the uh, sewer project. Expenses this year do include a 7.75% increase in payroll. And again, some key items there were just uh, some uh, starting wage increases and, and things in that payroll this time. Were there any questions regarding the budget? And again, it will come before you for actual approval a little bit later. Nope. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. 
Next, we'll have Director of Planning and Development, Tim Burks. All right, we have the um, amendment to the Section 405.350 Notice of Public Hearing, AMD 117. We have the Ben Beckmeyer Construction Office, Conditional Use and Site Plan, um, with conditions of uh, no outside storage and the trash containers in the fence area. Uh, Steinhagen boundary line adjustment SUBD that's 91 and all these items have there's four bills on the agenda let me ask you a question here in a minute actually counselor and melody first does is this something we have to do when he's already gone over this twice so far in the meeting because this does seem redundant it, it is redundant I, I I know that we're trying to figure it out and it we've seen okay. some of those redundancies throughout it's really making sure <coughs> that I mean, he can go up there and just bring up the project and say, do you have any questions? But to give clear points of discussion for the more difficult ones. So I think we can look at it, Mayor. Okay, okay. And, and no big deal, except for if we're looking for a redundancy in certain sections of our ordinances, I think we also need to look for redundancies in our meetings to maybe cut some of that short too. So that, number one, Tim doesn't have to get up three times and talk in front of the mic when he's providing the same information over and over. I mean, it, honestly, that, that can be annoying, I'm sure. Um, not to us, but so much for you to have to repeat the same thing over and over. So if we can kind of look into it and it's not necessary, we probably need to cut some of that out. So that was it. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Building Commissioner Mike Ross. Good evening, Mayor and Board. You have my monthly report. Mike, is there anything special on here you at all that you'd like to tell us about? As far as anything special? Yeah, anything going on that we ought to, I mean, well, your building's um, still going? Well, Pickney is starting to develop George Heath's property over there. You've got rough grading done now. We've got all the sanitary and sewer pipe delivered over there now, so some underground infrastructure is going to start. Warrior's almost built out. There's only one lot left over there without a foundation. It's crazy how fast that's going. That was two-year project, <coughs> 80 houses. Wow. Every one of them sold um, within the time they put something in the ground. It's good to hear. And uh, we're just waiting for everything else to start breaking loose. Lumber is really killing us. Interest rates are helping, but lumber's killing us. I think I heard today where uh, lumber may be going down a little bit. I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> well, it's, it's been up 70% over the last eight months. Yeah. So uh, $45 a sheet for 3 8 plywood. It's, it's, it's hard. It's hard on our contractors. I'm sure it is. So, thank you. You're welcome. Looks like uh, three pools. Three pool permits. Is that correct? Find a pool. No, say that was big. You couldn't find any of it. Yeah, it's hard to find pools even right now. And if you have one, if you paid 300 for it last year, it's worth 3,000 this year. <laughs> Never thought a pool would be gold. I always thought it was a money pit, but I guess it's. it's you know, they are. <laughs> and fencing, um, decks have went down this year also you know, um, because lumber prices. It's, so. it's crazy. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Next will be Chief of Police, Larry Ellard. Good evening. First item I have for you is my monthly report. Not very exciting. Columns of numbers. The only other thing I have for you is to remind everybody that next month on July 1st, court will be in person right here in this building. First time in a year and a half. I'll just say it. I, I talked to our judge, and it's probably the only judge that I talked to that's excited about getting in person. <laughs> he actually sat there and talked to me for a while about it. So There's quite a backlog to get over. There is. So <laughs> I, I didn't know why he was so excited about having that amount of backlog to deal with. But that not for me to choose. I was happy to talk to him, and I'm glad he's still happy to be out here. 
Any questions for Chief? No. All right, thank you. So bills of ordinance is the next section. Before that, Adam, do you mind if I ask you a question? Do you mind coming up to the podium? So have you seen that recent addition we did with the adding the the things on the agenda we see on the website, correct? Have you I haven't seen actually that? viewed it live on the website, but uh, I've been staying, I've been paying attention to it as it's being discussed at the meetings. And the reason why I bring that up is I know everybody likes to review it, but especially because you like to report on things and prepare yourself, I mean, does that aid you? Yeah, I think that would be very helpful um, to be able to get access to that information. I certainly won't need to bother Melody as much, but <laughs> I won't get to have pleasant interactions with Melody as much. Anytime, it's all right. <laughs> sure. It's just you're one that I know does look into that stuff, and, and I mean we all do, but you'd be one that would really utilize that, I'm sure. So yeah, I think it's a great change. Okay, excellent. Thanks. That's it. I just wanted to make seeing how big of an impact it would make for your Thank job. So all right, bills of ordinance. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 34-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Quarter, seconded by Alderman Jaspring. Bill number 34-21, an ordinance authorizing execution of agreements between the Warren County R3 School District and the City of Warrington, Missouri for school crossing guards, security services, and resource officers. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of a bill number 34-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alvin Deloy. Second by Alvin Krupp. Bill number 34-21, an ordinance authorizing execution of agreements between the Warren County R3 School District and the City of Warrington, Missouri for school crossing guards, security services, and resource officers. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Jaspering. Yes. Alderman Deloy. Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 35 21. So moved. Second. Motion made by McCollum. Seconded by. Which one of you guys wants to take? Because you both said at the same time. Give it to whoever. We'll give it to Deloy. Bill number 35-21, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement between the Warren County Council on Aging and the City of Warrington, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill number 35-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, seconded by Alderman Jaspering. Bill number 35-21, an ordinance authorizing execution of an agreement between the Warren County Council on Aging and the City of Warrington, Missouri. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Jaspering. Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Bill passes 6 0. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 36 21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Crump, second by Alderman Cullum. Bill number 36-21, an ordinance amending section 405.340 subsection E1 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri regarding Board of Aldermen action on conditional use permit. Obtain a motion for the second reading of 36-21. So moved. Second. Who was the so moved? Motion made by Alderman Quarter, seconded by Alderman Schultz. Bill number 36-21, an ordinance amending section 405.340 subsection E1 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri regarding Board of Aldermen action on conditional use permit. Roll call, please. Alderman Deloy? Yes. Alderman Scholes? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Bill passes 6-0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 37-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alvin Deloy. Second by Alvin Crump. Bill number 37-21, an ordinance approving the conditional use permit to allow Ben Beckemeyer Construction Office located at 706 South Highway 47. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 37-21. So moved. Second. I want to ask a question on it. 
Yeah, the second. Yeah, it's up for debate. We haven't voted on it yet. I, I just had a quick question uh, on this. Was this is truly a going to be a construction office where we're not going to have any equipment uh, sitting outside in the park parking lot uh, is kind of where I was. What I'm, I'd like to know. And uh, yeah, I, I did they is, did that make it on this the condition? On yeah, the, yeah, it's on there. Yes, it did. Yeah, it's storage. Storage. <clears throat> yeah, no outdoor storage. In fact, uh, it was presented at planning and zoning by Mr. Beckbar and his engineer that they were had no intention and were fine with the condition. With no storage, storage of uh, of equipment is more what I was looking for. Uh, you know that type of thing. The right part. I mean, I understand. I understand building material, but I'm talking about bobcats, that kind of stuff, sitting out uh, on the property. Right. I mean, there there may be an occasional truck and trailer parked there for for a short period of time in the parking lot as a parking during spot. working. But yeah. like, but, for what but like I guess for, what I'm for, looking for is weekends and things like that. I, I'm a little concerned that we're going to wind up with. Uh, multiple pieces of equipment out there during non-working hours, and I don't. I, right. I think. Yeah, I, it's not to be a equipment lot. Okay. By by any that's, means. So that's what I want to hear. Like I say, that Alderman Quarter, would you want to consider an amendment? No overnight storage of equipment. Sure. I, I'd like to. Because that typically is how you. Oh. Push I don't want to. I, think, I don't want to hold anything up, but I don't want to. I think I we just, just don't want to. Problem part. You know, I don't know, but I mean, I know from without talking with my client, I know that you know when you operate anything, whether it's a lawn service or anything, sometimes you have a trailer parked in a parking spot for a night or two, just so that you don't have to drag a trailer home. But yet, not like a storage where you're just parking equipment out there for long periods of time. So I, I don't know what that definition well, of outside well, storage he's got, is. He can park inside as well, but he can't park inside. Okay. Yes. So. But he's not planning on, you know, having pallets of bricks and lumber or something sitting out in the middle of the parking lot. And, and, and equipment. <laughs> I guess, you know, I, that, I just don't want that there on 47 to be a place where people drive by and we're seeing equipment. It, like a, a, it looks like a construction shop. And so if it says it's going to be an office, I have no problem with that. And I have no problem with... Uh, equipment being there occasionally, I get it, I understand, but just sitting there night after night, I, I, I just assume that not happen. Sure. There's a tree service right on the road. So probably... I'm not okay on the tree service. So, okay. So, Alderman Corridor, you, you'd make a motion to amend the bill to add that condition, and then they'd vote on Okay. That motion to add that condition and then go back to the main motion, Mayor. Okay. I'd like to add that amendment. Yeah. I just got a question. What do we add? I got a question, Chris, because under that it already says on the cup, it says there will not be any outside storage at this location. So wouldn't that already cover that? or? Well, I think to provide the clarification, obviously they're, you know, I don't think it's going to hurt. Um, you could also make an amendment to say no outdoor storage of materials and no overnight storage of equipment. That may even make it even better if you want to consider that amendment, Alderman Column, if that makes sense. I'm okay with either one. I just I just wanted to, I saw Alderman, that in there. I just assumed Alderman that I already covered Porter. all that. But What do you think about that? No, I'll that's, Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so is we that your amendment? Of no... Uh, Outdoor storage, storage, change that of materials, and no overnight equipment. storage of equipment. Sure. Yes, so that works think, for me. That's the motion, Mayor. Call him for a second on that motion to amend the main motion what are we doing so it's an amendment to the main motion so he wants to amend the bill which is what the question in front you're considering the amendment of no out clarifying where it says no outdoor storage no outdoor storage of materials and adding an additional condition uh, no overnight storage of equipment so it's just a vote we're just there, changing it needs a second, it needs a second, but um, it would be just a vote on that amendment, not on the main motion, to consider whether or not to accept that amendment. I mean, what if, I, I don't understand all that because, I mean, there's could be times where he doesn't have time to do that. He's having a rough day and if he wants to trailer sit out there until the next morning, I mean, 
I don't think that's a big deal if it sits there overnight and then he needs to move it in the morning. I just so, so I the, don't find an issue with it. And yeah, I, I get it. The, the the amendment to the motion, you can either vote in a positive or negative for okay. whenever it comes up. I mean, I'm not trying to rush it along. Right. I just okay. a, when a motion's made on the board, we still have to entertain. Okay. It and look at it. So. <coughs> Um, the amendment of this the motion to clarify no outside storage of materials and overnight parking, correct? Correct. It still needs a second though, there's before it's gonna die. What did you say? It, it needs, needs a, a second or it dies. I'll second it. All right. So made by Alderman Corder. Up for debate. Seconded by Alderman Dulloy. Roll call vote. Alderman Scholes. Alderman Crump? No. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? No. Alderman Draspering? No. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Motion. Uh, motion does not pass at a four to one no vote. So now it goes to the main motion. What were they on? Were they on the I've got it. reading? The second, second reading? we were on the second reading. The uh, the motion was made by Alvin Schultz, seconded by Alvin Cullum for the second reading of bill number 37-21. The, f the second motion for the second reading, uh, the motion by the second reading, is that what you're asking about? Mm -hmm. Was the first motion was made by Alderman Schultz, the second one was by Alderman Cullum, and it's still on the floor as active for the second reading. So he calls for a roll call? No, I need a call second reading. Second. We, haven't do, we oh, didn't do a second, second reading. reading. You're right. I got okay. you. Sorry. <clears throat> Bill number 37-21, an ordinance approving the conditional use permit to allow Ben Beckemeyer Construction Office located at 706 South Highway 47. Roll call vote. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Motion passes 6 to 0. Our bill passes 6 to 0. My apologies. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 38-21. So moved. Second. I'm going to go with Alderman Cullum, second of Alderman Jaspering. Bill number 38-21, a zoning ordinance as authorized under section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving a site plan for Ben Beckemeyer Construction Office located at 706 South Highway 47. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of Bill Number 38-21. So moved. Second. Bill Number 38. Motion made by oh, Alderman Schultz. Sorry. Alderman Crump. Hey, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Bill Number 38-21, a zoning ordinance as authorized under Section 405.390 of the Municipal Code of the City of Warrington, Missouri, approving a site plan for the Ben Beckemeyer Construction Office located at 706 South Highway 47. Roll call vote. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 39 21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, second by Alderman Quarter. Bill number 39-21, an ordinance accepting the boundary adjustment adjustment for lot one and two of block one in College Heights addition to the city of Warrington by the city of Warrington, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 39-21. So moved. Second. Sick. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Crump. Bill number 39-21, an ordinance accepting the boundary adjustment for lot one and two of block one in College Heights addition to the city of Warrington by the city of Warrington, Missouri. Roll call vote. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. 
Alderman Quarter. Yes. Bill passes 6 0. <coughs> I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of Bill number 40 21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, second by Alderman Jaspering. Bill number 40-21, an ordinance amending the budget of the City of Warrington, Missouri for fiscal year 2020 to 2021. I'll entertain a motion for the second reading of bill number 40-21. So moved. Second. Motion made by Alvin Delaway, second by Alvin Jaspering. Bill number 40-21, an ordinance amending the budget of the City of Warrington, Missouri for fiscal year 2020 to 2021. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Jaspering. Yes. Alderman Delaloy. Yes. Alderman Schulz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Bill passes 6 to 0. I'll entertain a motion for the first reading of bill number 41 21. So moved. Second. Second. Motion made by Alderman Cullum, seconded by Alderman Jaspering. Bill number 41 1, an ordinance adopting an annual budget for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2021, and appropriating funds pursuant thereto. To the motion for the second reading of bill number 41-21. So moved. Second. <coughs> motion made by Alderman Delaware, second by Alderman Quarter. Bill number 41-21, an ordinance adopting an annual budget for the fiscal year beginning on July 1st, 2021, and appropriating funds pursuant thereto. Roll call vote. Alderman Delaware. Yes. Alderman Scholes. Yes. Alderman Crump. Yes. Alderman Quarter. Yes. Alderman Cullum. Yes. Alderman Jaspering. Yes. We're at the last bit, but before we do that, Melody, would you like to introduce the person who has been reading this whole time? This is Madison Kinley. She is my deputy city clerk. So Madison, you've done a wonderful job for your first time. Thank you. You did. So thank you. It's kind of hard to do that. It's kind of hard to jump in and try and do things, especially when it can be a little nerve wracking. So you did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to close the regular Board of Alderman meeting and go into executive session for real estate or personnel issues. Second. Motion made by Alderman Schultz, second by Alderman Crump. Roll call vote, please. Alderman Schultz? Yes. Alderman Crump? Yes. Alderman Quarter? Yes. Alderman Cullum? Yes. Alderman Jaspering? Yes. Alderman Delaloy? Yes. Motion passes 6 to 0, and we are so adjourned. We will be Picking up the executive session momentarily.